Hi, I'm Richard Westerby and welcome to the IVF Daddies podcast. Today, we have the honour of having my best friend Emilia Varfis here to talk to us. Hello, Emilia. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you doing? Very good. Very glad to be here. It's an honour to have you. I've known Emilia since day one of university back in the day. We literally were sitting next door to each other in a conference hall and you were writing something in Greek which remind me of Vadiem, which means I'm bored. Correct. And we've been friend, friend, friends ever since. But we haven't been bored. We have not been bored. That is very true. Emily, you are the CEO of Velos Advisory and Will de Vie, two very successful companies. And we're here primarily today to talk about egg freezing and how you've created your family. 12 years ago, we were sitting over a bottle of wine and we had a very meaningful conversation because you had offered my ex-husband and I to have your eggs to create our family. And to this day, it still pains me that I said no. But um, I said no. Tell me, what did you think? How did that feel? I did it because I knew how keen you were to have a family. And at the time, it was all kind of very novel to all of us. And the one thing that I wanted is to make it to, to help you in any yeah. way I can. So since you were looking to figure out how to do this... The, the only natural thing that I could think about was making that offer to you. That's amazing. Still to this day, I'm like, wow. And you said no. And I said no. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> how did it feel? It was, for me, it was very natural to offer it. It was a little bit weird to hear you say no, but I totally understand why you did. Yeah. I might never forgive you, but. No. You're here. <laughs> I'm actually, we're 12 years old and we're now having cups of tea. Yeah. That's how boring we've got. And to this day, I'm always going to be thankful for that. And you were very much by my side, really, throughout the whole navigation of building my family. And it and it was very unknown, really, wasn't it? Yeah. It was just one of those, what am I doing? But you researched everything. And you tried so hard to find the optimal solution every step of the way, which brought you to where you are today as well. Yeah, I know. Wow. Enough about me. Let's <laughs> more, more about you. So we went through the whole process. Obviously, we have your godson and goddaughter, in effect. We do. Both downstairs currently. How did that then manifest into your life and changing what you were thinking and the perception of everything? First of all, I think what you created is one of the most beautiful families that I know. And seeing a gay couple making all of this effort at the time when things were not as commonplace as they are now to do it was something that I was going to support uh, 100% every step of the way. But all I see is two parents that had beautiful twins and that they are showered with love. I think what happened at the time is that you then decided that you were going to become an ambassador towards fertility and surrogacy and everything. And at the time, these things were not discussed very much. And I remember being around about 36 years old, and you just said to me at the edge of your living room, you might have to think about freezing your eggs. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like a sidebar so comment. So <laughs> not ready to do that yet. And just go away. And a couple of years later, you nudged me again. And I was like, I don't know. And I'm not sure. And I'm Go away. I'm not ready yet. Mm. And when then you say I, you weren't ready, what do you mean? I didn't think about the when is the perfect age, what is the, the right time to do it. At the time, it wasn't really known for women to freeze their eggs or that it would be the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. All I knew is that at some point I thought I was going to find love and I was going to have a child naturally at the time that I needed to have it. And I didn't need to think about alternative preparations. Let's put it that way. And at the time, I was building a career. So yeah. I was bouncing around Europe. I was uh, building the company that I was working for, building an M&A division. So basically, you, it was almost like you were creating a career and an environment, a stable financial environment to be able to then think about it in the future, or you just hadn't even thought about family? I, I had thought about family, but I always thought family would come when I would fall in love. And at the time, I was also working in business and I wasn't willing to stop working in business for the purposes of doing something different. I thought that it was all going to fall naturally into place. Fall into place. Yeah. Destiny, fate. So at the time, I was working in the city. I was working very hard, long hours, traveling a lot. And there was 
a moment, a light bulb that said to me that maybe I should listen to you and maybe I should <laughs> try to do this egg freezing process. So what happened at the time was that I was literally, I think, one year into a new pretty demanding job. And I decided that I wanted to go to take the plunge, to, to freeze my eggs. And I didn't know where and I didn't know how and I, I didn't necessarily have the financial capacity to do it in the States because yeah. that would have been a, an expensive process. So I did my research about where I could do it in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I found I am Greek and I chose that I, I spoke to various doctors in Greece and I figured out that it was possible to do it in Greece. Yeah, It was a... Uh, costly uh, financially feasible to do it in Greece yeah and I decided not to tell hardly anyone especially my work and I just told them that I just need to take two weeks off for personal medical reasons so why didn't you want to tell anybody because I didn't know how this would uh, unfold I didn't know how I would feel I didn't know the effects it might have on me to the whole cycle as in effects as in physically or emotionally physically, or... Phys physically emotionally and everything. My mother knew, yeah. although my mother had seen it on TV and suggested it. <laughs> and she's, she was never someone that pressured me that I had to have children at a certain time or anything else. So I just decided that it was a per very personal choice. So yeah. you knew, I knew, my mother knew. Yeah. And another friend of mine who was a fertility specialist actually knew as well. So when I chose to do it, I knew that I had to cut off from working intensely for a period of time. So I timed it very well and I decided to go for it. And when you were, I, I really want to think about and think through that emotional, you couldn't tell anybody. It's like, it, to me that it's almost, it's, it was, but you didn't feel like you, it was something you wanted to discuss. Is that because I wanted it to be my personal, personal thing, journey, journey yeah. at the time I yeah. told tons of people afterwards but at the time I didn't know what to say I didn't know why I should I, it was it was a choice that I was making mm. for myself and I just wanted to keep it personal amazing yeah you and know? I think you know if I look back on the surrogacy journey that I did it's the same thing I kept it very quiet because mm. I didn't want to be judged I didn't want people to say why are you doing this I will tell you what happened though which is very interesting so I I on the first day of having to use the injections and everything else, I chose to check myself into a hotel in Greece to stay away from my family, to do this whole moment of commencement of this process all on my own. And I remember that through the first week of injections, I had to go and get some tests with my gynecologist so that they can determine how many eggs were being were, right. were growing. Yeah. And at the time, that gynecologist had a Swedish assistant, teacher, uh, a support person. I can't remember what they were, but they congratulated me for doing it. Sorry. They said that this is not common in Greece. Mm -hmm. I'm very brave to have made that decision and good on me because it wasn't something that they saw very frequently in, um, in Greece. So if, you, if I could have one outcome from doing everything with regards to IVF daddies that is women realizing and understanding and destigmatizing egg freezing, I would be super happy. I think things have changed radically since I've done this process as yeah. well. This, uh, so when I just told you what I was told by a foreign woman working in the Greek medical industry system. and system. But now... So the rest of my journey about my family, which we'll get into now, when I went into an IVF clinic, there were young girls, just as young as I am, of course, which are late twenties, <laughs> they were, that were freezing their eggs because now they know those first few days. Okay. So you've checked yourself into a hotel in Athens. How was, how were those few days you were sitting on your own injecting? Talk through the injection process as well, but how were you feeling? At that so time? the first couple of days I didn't know or I didn't feel safe to inject myself. So I would go to a pharmacy and ask them to help me with the injections. I was very fortunate because I had a very good friend that was visiting Athens that weekend and he is a fertility specialist. So he was basically telling me, this is what you're gonna feel, this is what's gonna happen or not. Don't be scared and everything else. So I was, I, it, I felt like very protected 
during that process and supported. And then two days in, I started injecting myself. I found it very easy. I'm quite resilient, generally. I didn't find it to be a strange process. And I don't think I felt any weird side effects. I didn't feel in the first week, because I'll get to the second week. <laughs> I, I felt nothing. Nothing was bothering me. I was fine. I went back home after the two days. I kept on going. I just made sure that I did things at the right time and on time. And then five days later, I had to go to the doctor, as I said, because he had to check how many eggs were growing. And I was told that I had a football team in my uterus <laughs> because there were about 12 eggs. They said to me they were very impressed and pleased with the results so far. Amazing. So the injections, big needles, small needles? Small needles. Where? Small needles, thin, very tiny, like the ones you can't really feel. Oh, okay. Um, on my stomach. I think I was told at the time that there's a four-week process or a two-week process which you can undertake to build your eggs during this process. The two-week process for a person that was as busy as I was the only way to go. Yeah. Um, I think now it's everything's two weeks. Yeah. So we've passed week one. You've got a football team in your uterus. <laughs> <laughs> week two. Week two. Sounds like there's a story. Week two was... The part where everything had to happen at a certain time. So there was an injection that I was given, I think, on the Friday. And the harvesting was done maybe six days later. So there was a booster, is what they called it. And that was from the Monday where I started the injections. I got the booster on the Friday. And from there, it just basically in instructed my body to keep producing eggs. And then there was a specific other visit that I had to go to the doctor where for upon, from that moment of that last injection that he gave me, I had 72 hours, if I recall, upon which then I had to walk into the hospital and have the harvesting done. During that time, I flew to Milan. I had three business meetings and then came back on the clock to be able to... So you can you can live your life around the injections. Of course. You just have to make sure that you're there for scans. And you have to be there on a certain day for scans. You have to be there on on certain days within that two week process. There are moments that you have to go to the doctor. They have to check you. They have to give you the booster, and then they have to give you that final injection, which is the catalyst before you go in for the har harvesting. Your life is fine. You keep on going no drinking of alcohol or anything else, be healthy. So I went to an island, I flew to Milan. I did everything that I could do and was able to do, so long as I didn't miss a boat and I didn't miss a plane or a train and yeah. I got back at the right time. Otherwise, if I had been late, for example, I'd have lost the moment for the harvesting to take right. place. And then it all happened and that was fine. And they told me what they, you know, what they harvested, which was like, they put me in hospital under a local, and they, I went under for, for a quick, quick day anesthesia sort of thing. So uh, uh, you were a general anesthetic for half a day. The whole process lasted half a day. I went in the morning, general anesthetic, and about two hours later, I was awake again and just had to recuperate and left the hospital. By which point they told me how many eggs they had harvested if one survived or if they all survived, which they did. And that was it. Now, what I was saying, what goes through after week two is that I bloated up a little bit. So I did feel that I had cankles. <laughs> I, I, that was the moment where I was like, okay, how do I go back to London? How do I get, how do I go back to work? I felt bloated, but that was the moment that it, after 10 days back to normal, it's as if it never happened. The process for me, it's the best thing I ever did. I Why? literally immediately felt a ton of relief off my back because I knew that I had bought time and no biological clock was ticking anymore. I had eggs in the freezer. Amazing. It is one of the best decisions I've ever made. So I owe you a massive thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm just thrilled you did it. So how many eggs did they get? They got 13 eggs of which I was told that there's, and I don't know how to define it, but there's a good level one quality and a level two quality. Mine were all level one, which is the top quality. So that to you gave you comfort and peace of mind that they were good? I was told that I had a very 
decent amount of eggs, first of all, for one effort. And I've heard other stories from other friends and they haven't had the same numbers. They've got five eggs, three eggs, two eggs. Even you had said to me that at the age that I had chose to do it, which was at 40 years old, I was on the the downturn, if you Sorry. like. No, it's fine. But it's for me, therefore, at that age, to have 13 eggs was a roaring success. So we first started discussing egg freezing when you we were we're the same age uh <laughs> when you were 36 yeah um what age did you finally get around to doing it so i did it when i was 40 years old because i decided that at that point i should listen to you and i i didn't think it was late you had said to me because i had to have certain tests to see if i could go through the process and you were saying, well, for your age, it's okay. And the results are fine and yeah. everything. So I had realized that it was a later age. Therefore, I didn't know what results I, were gonna get, I was going to get. So I basically, I had said, for me, 40 was my crunch time. I'd realized that my bubble of fantasy of finding love at the right time and doing what, whatever needed to be done to create a family at which point, for whatever way that it would be created... I had to build a buffer, your... so I decided to go through with the process. So 40 was your cutoff age? 40 was my cutoff age to freeze. Yeah. And then I had I gave myself, this was my discussion with myself, five or six years to decide if I had not been in a relationship, whether I would be choosing a sperm donor to do it myself, to create an embryo. Because one of the things that I was also asked at the time was, did I want to create embryos? over just freezing eggs and I did not want to create embryos. I wanted to just freeze eggs. Did they explain why? Because they told me that it might be healthier at that age to create the embryos or easier for embryos to be to, just to have some embryos at the time. So you've done this, you're going into this process and they say to you, do you want to make embryos? How did that feel? Part of my self-care is that I have a very good acupuncturist and he specializes in fertility. So he was also very supportive at the time when I had told him as well. And he was, he basically said to me, why just freeze eggs? Why not also create embryos, buy sperm, do whatever? And I just mentally wasn't ready to do the embryo process. I wanted that to leave that to fate, nature see how that would go. That was a decision that I was not ready. I was, I wanted to make that decision at a later date. So I didn't find it, I didn't find it strange for him to ask me, but I found I couldn't decide. So it wasn't the clinic that was asking if you wanted to freeze eggs or embryos. It was your acupuncturist who was asking you. I didn't actually go to a clinic. I just went to my gynecologist and asked him about the process and he decided to help me because he knew within his hospital that this is something that he could take care of. So it wasn't a question from my gynecologist or any clinic. Okay, fine. Before we jump into the next step, which is part of which I really want to talk about because <laughs> it, it makes me smile. You, you've been through the process, age 40, you've got 13 top quality eggs what do you then think how are you feeling i'm feeling massively relieved that i haven't got people breathing down my neck that i am too late might not have uh, be able to have children because now i'm very proud and i can say guys i've frozen my eggs i'm good i can sit pretty and get on with my life just as i've wanted to and they're right there. And in fact, they're really good quality ones. I didn't know exactly what that meant. But for me, it was as if a ton of pressure had just come off my shoulders. Amazing. And it, was it pressure you even knew you had? No. It, it was a little bit of pressure that I started feeling towards the time that I was reaching 40. Hence why I decided to listen to you. But it was... Apparently a lot more pressure when I felt the relief of it. Interesting. So you didn't realize that you're under the pressure until after you had done the process. And then all of a sudden you have this relief. Yeah. Amazing. And the one thing that I will say is that obviously I, I realized that at my age, this was a very successful effort. And in fact, I'm very pleased to say that even one of my best friends who was also in a very similar situation to me, chose to do, follow suit. And in Greece, did it very privately, on her own, 
barely told me, just only at the end, at the age of 42, and she got 13 eggs as well of premium quality. So she and I literally were like, Chin, we, we've done really well. And how is it to know that you impacted somebody else? It made me feel very good because I think I, I gave her a lot of breathing space as well. Thank you for doing that for her. So we've now fast forward a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got these eggs on ice. Tell yeah. us what happens next. So the fairy tale is that I met a boy. I met him four years ago and a, he's a lovely person who didn't quite know what where we were supposed to go together as a relationship until maybe about a year and a half ago, if not just a little bit more, where I I basically said to him that I've I the grace period is over, if you like. I've basically chosen that I want to have a child and I would like to have it with him, obviously since we're together. And he agreed. So we decided that we would try naturally yeah. but with a cutoff of a certain time where we would then defrost the eggs Defroster. this has been absolutely fascinating hearing your egg freezing story and i know that there'll be lots of people out there who appreciate everything you said so thank you very much for sharing that with us it's my um, pleasure i'm very glad to have been part of this effort with you guys um promoting all of these initiatives and these ideas oh I feel that there's enough, we could keep on talking. So I might ask you to return so we can follow on from this to see where you are now. Would you be up for that? Absolutely, and any time you want. Oh, brilliant. Well, anyway, thank you so much. And um, thank you. We love you. Love you too. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to learn more about IVF and surrogacy, then please subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please share and follow our social media handle at IVF Daddies. We are here to answer any questions and to guide you through this very personal process.